Uh, Mr. President. The Minister of Finance has spent his entire 45 minutes taking us on a journey <laughs> to nowhere. To nowhere, like the highway they built recently in, my, in Komuto. A highway to nowhere. But this is a journey to nowhere. All over the globe, COVID. Global crisis, <laughs> war, energy prices. <laughs> but, Mr. President, the minister has not explained in his 45 minutes what, what is the justification? What is the justification for seeking? an additional $10 billion. $10,000 million. Why? What projects are you going to spend $10,000? Million dollars. Nothing, wow. Mr. President. Mm. But we are taken on a journey around the globe. Yes. Up to now, we, the Honorable Minister cannot explain to this Honorable Senate what is the government going to do, Mr. President, to improve the quality of life of the people with those sums. Not only that, Mr. President, we are not even told by the minister, OK, you're going to borrow 10 billion. But how much you borrowed since 2015? You were telling the country that. Mr. President, this government has built nothing and continues to build nothing. 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 well apart from nothing. <laughs> Mr. President, the government of Trinidad and Tobago over the last nine years, eight and a half years would have constructed a virtual death bomb yes. in our country. Death bomb, yes. Mr. President, that will explode our and will hurt and damage and injure every man, woman, and child in our nation. That is what Mr. President, may I tell you, I listen with some degree of anguish and pain listening to the Honorable Minister engage in the mama guy of the century. Mama guy and fooling the nation. Mr. President, may I remind the Honorable Senate through you? that at the end of 2011, Trinidad and Tobago had an accumulated debt of $30,000 million, $30 billion. That is at the end of 2011 under the People's Partnership Administration. When they come in, how much it was? When the government of Dr. D. Right Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Member of Parliament for Diego Martin West, came into 
existence and on the compound in 2015. Mr. President, where were we? Mr. President, in 2015, September, we were 30,000 million dollars in debt. And then come December, three months later, in a debate in this very chamber, if I recall, the debt, Mr. President, went from 30 to 45. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, by December, this government just came into office, and in less than two months, they were in the parliament, and they increased the debt by 15 thousand million dollars. So we went to 45. Mr. President, listen to me carefully. In 2020, the government increased the debt, the PNM government increased the debt by another 10 thousand million dollars. So from 45 to 55. Mr. President, you understand the extent of the debt that we have incurred? And Mr. President, that happened in December of 2020. And Mr. President, before you could dust your shoes off the mat, in less than six months, Come again. July of 2021, nah. they came back to the parliament for another $10 billion. $10,000 million. So we move from 55 to 65. 65. In 2021, Mr. President, that is where we went. And then, Mr. President, the Honorable Minister, on his, on his journey to nowhere, tells us now, give me another $10,000 million. So between 2011 to 2024, we moved from 30 billion TT dollars in loans, the ceiling, so we are, Mr. President, today, 75, once this is passed, billion TT dollars. I want to repeat that, Mr. President. 75, when we were 30, under the PP in 2011, up to 2015. Mr. President, let me tell this honorable sir. It took 51 years 14 and 14 different governments to reach $30 billion. I want to repeat. It took 51 years and 14 different governments to reach Mr. President, $30 billion. And when Hurricane PNM arrived on the scene, Mr. President, it took us eight and a half years. Eight and a half years to reach what? 75. So Mr. President, within nine years, if you want to be generous, it took this government nine years 
to increase our debt burden by 45 billion dollars. Now, it's not treason. It's not economic treason that, 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 that we should be charging this government for. In less than nine years, Mr. President, every man, woman, and child Mr. President, in 2011, every citizen, man, woman, and child had, Mr. President, to pay back at that time, at that time, 30 billion. Mr. President, $38,000. By 2015, that went up to what, Mr. President? 58 or somewhere there, 58 thousand dollars each man, woman, and child. And by 2020, it went up to 73 thousand or thereabouts. Today, Mr. President, we are at over 300 thousand dollars for man, woman, and child. From $38,000 in 2011, we are now at 300,000 and growing dollars. And Mr. President, what is extremely worrying, troubling, disturbing, is that when we look at the motion, the motion talks about financing general development. It talks about repayment of loans that you would have borrowed. It talks about financing development, state enterprises, statutory authorities, the University of the West Indies, among others. But Mr. President, how are we going to grow? How are we going to develop when the government comes to borrow $10,000 million and they do not tell the Senate how they're going to spend this 10000 You know what is even ironic, Mr. President? The minister just admitted to us here when the honorable minister went on his road show in the United States. The creditors up there, the honorable minister said he had to present a detailed plan because no creditors are going to part with their monies without they understand how they're going to pay them back. So you have to go in a room and properly explain to these creditors if I'm going to raise a billion US dollars, how am I going to repay you? The report prospectus, 500 pages long. They have to go in a higher Regency hotel, conference room, to explain in detail, Mr. President, how they're going to repay these things back. You know, when it comes to the people of this country, Total disrespect, total contempt, total contumely, Mr. President. Where is the prospectus? Where are the details? How are you going to spend our money? Where are the plans? Where are the programs? What are the projects? You have come here. The Honorable Minister comes here, presents no plans, give us no program, no development strategies, and they want us, like blindfolded people, Mr. President, give support to what? Another $10,000 million. And they cannot tell us how they're going to repay it, 
and what productive investments, Mr. President, we are going to engage in to ensure that the monies that we are going to invest will bring returns on the investments. Nothing. So we are to just accept what the minister is saying. So today as we speak, the total public debt minus sterilization is $137 billion, according to the Central Bank latest report. $137 billion and rising. Mr. President, when the government came, came to power, when the government came to power, Mr. President, in 2015, Mr. President, I'm getting a little noise in the back. Can I ask? Yeah. Senators, I'm getting a lot of... Um, okay, Senator Mark. <clears throat> Mr. President, when the government came into office in 2015, you know what was the debt to GDP ratio? The debt to GDP ratio, Mr. President, was 46%. You know, as we speak today, you know where it is at? Not what the minister just told us. The minister, Mr. President, with the greatest respect, owes this parliament an apology. He just told the parliament that our debt to GDP ratio is closer to 70 percent. Mr. President, the minister gave his approval to the IMF to produce the concluding statement on their 2024 article, which was published on the 11th of March, 2024. The minister approved this. You know what the minister approved? Mr. President, may I tell you, the debt to GDP, according to the numbers exposed to the IMF, is 73.4% and not 70. Not 70. So why would the minister come to this parliament and mama guy and fool the people and fool the Senate? He has to apologize to this parliament for deliberately misrepresenting the facts. That is what he has to do, Mr. President. Mr. President, I want to indicate that when we talk about financing general development, and we cannot get from the minister any idea. All he's saying, Mr. President, you see that 200 million, 400 million remaining from the 10,000 million? That is not enough headroom. So we have to get 10,000 million to do what, what, what we have to do. But what do you have to do? What do you have to do? And then the common mama guy us again to tell us the 10,000 billion, 10 billion rather, is not going to be authorized or to be used by the honorable minister and the government because the budget has already been approved. But all of us know that in the month of May, Mr. President, Correct. the government is going to come with a mid-year review. And in a mid-year review, the minister has the authority to supplement the budget. So if he wants to call a snap election, he can use his $10 billion to supplement the budget. 
So why you come here to Mama Guy us to say see that ten thousand million? That will not allow me to come back here for years. Mama Guy! So Mr. President, this is highly disturbing. How can we, the alternative government, support a motion that is going to allow this government to engage in reckless abandonment? It is irresponsible. Are we, is the government saying, Mr. President, that this $10,000 million is going to be used as part of their war chest to prepare for the next general election? What is it? Because you're not telling the Senate exactly what you intend to do with the 10,000 million dollars. Mr. D Mr. President, financing general development, we are told in the motion, and the question that we have to ask, for who? Who is this $10,000 million going towards? It cannot be the people, because the people are not benefiting from what you are doing. You're not doing anything to help the people. What I can tell you, Mr. President, is that what we have seen over the last few years, outside of April of 2023, when the government proclaimed the procurement legislation, prior to that period, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. President, used funds, used the $45 billion, excluding the 10 that is coming. But they used the $35 billion to finance general development. And what was this general development that they financed? And how did the people of Trinidad and Tobago benefit from it? Mr. President, procurement legislation, as I said, only came into being a few months ago. But prior to that, we had leakages of tens of billions of dollars because of the absence of procurement. So you had a lot of waste mismanagement, squander mania, nepotism, corruption. And we are being asked to continue to finance these kinds of irregularities without any sort of accountability and no transparency, Mr. President. How can we do that, Mr. President? This government used this $35 billion that they extracted from loans that they borrowed over the last eight and a half years to finance a number of activities in which there were huge cost overruns for Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to ask the Honorable Minister of Finance if he could explain to this country how 2K class patrol vessels that cost the Australian Navy 300 million TT dollars happened to cost Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard and the government 
hundred million dollars. A hundred percent increase. Is that what we are approving here? Is that what we are being asked, Mr. President, to support? Mr. President, where are the efficiencies? How are we gaining when we approve these things as a country? How are citizens gaining from it? Where is the accountability? Mr. President, we talk about 45 with this 10. Never forget, Mr. President, that this government raided the heritage and stabilization fund, you know. All that was part and parcel of COVID and falling prices. And they got a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars from abroad in loans and grants. So when you put all those things together, Mr. President, you are talking about tens and tens and tens of thousands of millions of dollars. And we have an unemployment rate of not 3.2%, that is artificial. You're talking about close to 120,000 people unemployed in this country as a minimum, Mr. President. So the minister must come and tell us what this money is going to be spent on. He has to give us a detailed account. Mr. President, you cannot expect senators to take and to make informed decisions with all critical information. Mr. President, we need critical information so that we can make decisions. What are we going to hold the Honorable Minister accountable for at the end of this exercise? If we have to call back the Minister, Mr. President, upon approving this 10,000 million in six months time, what are we holding him accountable to? What? Because there's nothing before us except old talk from the minister. But when you go to the United States to raise capital, you have to give the creditors concrete, written information on how you're going to guarantee their returns. You have to show the economy is stable. You have to show, Mr. President, what projects you are going to invest in. That is what you have to do, Mr. President. The minister must tell this parliament, in the wake of our tottering economy, how is the government, in accordance, Mr. President, of this motion before us, that is repayment of borrowings effected for such general development. Mr. President, the government must admit, Mr. President, and share with this parliament, given this kind of money that they intend to borrow, they have to tell this parliament how they intend to repay what they are going to borrow. Mr. President, I say this against the background of the following. The government knows that the lifeblood of this economy is natural gas. They know that the lifeblood of this country is the foreign exchange that we need to import all that we need, Mr. President. But the main lifeblood of our nation is on decline. Mr. President, do you know, as we speak, 
natural gas production is down to some 2.5, 2.4 billion standard cubic feet of gas. Do you know what Moody's is predicting? By 2025, 2026, if we do not discover and pump new natural gas into our reserves, we are going to be down to 2.3, 2.3 billion standard cubic feet of natural gas. Mr. President, if we are talking about repayment under this motion of the borrows, the borrowings that we are engaging, the minister must explain to this parliament how are we going to repay? Because we are not increasing natural gas production. Natural gas production is declining. And Mr. President, if you don't know, you know, you know, oil production is at its lowest for 85 years, for the last 85 years. We are producing less than 54,000 barrels of oil per day in Trinidad and Tobago. You know the price of the basket that have been used to gain a better price for our natural gas and Atlantic energy products. You know those prices have collapsed. The minister has admitted that, and the prime minister have also admitted that. The price of natural gas and, and, and liquefied natural gas all have collapsed. The price of oil is stuttering all over the place. So our main products, energy products, Mr. President, is not fetching the monies that we anticipated. But you come here to borrow $10,000 million, but you have to tell us, Mr. President, how you're going to repay it. Mr. President, do you know that at last methanol will be shut in its doors, according to a newspaper report, and no one has denied it, by the end of September 2024? You know what that would mean? It would mean almost a million tons of methanol products will not be produced and exported. What impact that will have on our revenue streams? What impact that will have on our foreign exchange? What impact that will have on employment levels in Trinidad and Tobago? How will that impact on our ability to repay our foreign debt? Our oh, domestic debt. The minister is not coming and telling us that, Mr. President. All of these prices, urea, ammonia, methanol, they, they, they are soft. They are soft. And Mr. President, do you know Atlantic LNG down in point four ten is operating at just about 65% capacity, according to my information? And out of 18 plants at the Point Lisa's industrial estate, my information, and the minister can deny or confirm, only nine are in operation out of 18 plants, Mr. President. And the bulk of them are, have spare capacity. You come here to borrow $10,000 million in this kind of environment, and you are not telling the Senate how we are going to repay back that money? How are we going to repay the money that you want to borrow? And what are you using it for? I don't want our money to be used to establish debt squads. Senator, you have five more minutes. Mr. President, thank you. Mr. President, $300 million in the last budget was used as a supplementation to bump up 
the SSA. Now we are here, Mr. President, the SSA has a death squad. A mongoose gang. A tonton magoot. And they're killing people in the country. So that is what you are asking me to approve? No. To give the SSS more money to kill more people? No. How can you support that? So, Senator Mark, Senator Mark, that particular point that you're making is not relevant to what is in front of us. Continue. Mr. President, I understand what you're saying. I won't hold back. Mr. President, let me just go to another point because we have a few more moments. Mr. President, you know what this government has been doing with our debt? Kicking the can down the road. You know, in the review of the economy that I read for 2023, 2024, they showed that the government raised almost 10, 10 bonds on the local market. Six of those amounting to close to $12 billion were used for what? Refinancing loans. I want the minister to tell this country which companies were involved. Was it global finance? Probably. Who benefited from the refinancing of these loans that you borrowed money to refinance? And then you, you, you borrowed money, Mr. President, to also give, I think, um, 3.2 billion to repay VAT refund and two others for budgetary support. That is what was in the review of the economy. But the minister must tell this country the six loans that were raised in order to deal with the refinancing of our loans amounting to close to 12 billion or thereabouts. You tell us if it was eight, tell us if it was six, tell us if it was 12, Mr. President, tell us. But also tell us, who were the financiers? Mr. President, I want to say in closing, the PNM government has weaponized of their friends, their financiers, and their family. I want to refer you to Act Number Seven of 2016. When they brought a bill, they brought an act here called the Finance Act. To do what? To give certain government officials the right to build multi-family residential dwelling units in Trinidad and Tobago. And Mr. President, when they build those multi-family dwelling units, they put in the legislation, once you sell it, to the Minister of Public Utilities, and Sandy living in one. Mr. 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 President, Mr. President, oh, I I 46, Mr. one 46. second, no, 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 raise the standing order. One and 46, six, please. So, Senator Mark, yes, 46, one is upheld. You already withdrawn. Yeah, simply saying that we must not be used by the government to raise money through borrowing for them to further their own nest. They are telling people they must pay taxes, but they are not paying taxes. And we have evidence of it. Mr. President, standing order 46-6 is imputing improper mood. So, again, Senator Mark, the last statement. Again, there's a slight imputation there. Be careful. Mr. President, let me wrap up because we will deal with them on the platform. Yes. We have all the evidence. We will deal with you on the, on the platform. Mr. President, let me say in closing, under no circumstances, no. the alternative government, the incoming government, of course. will ever support that motion that is before us. It is, it is reckless. It is irresponsible. It is dangerous. It is troubling. It is disturbing for us to support. Senator Mark. Senator Mark. Senator Mark, time is up. Your time is up. Thank you. Have a seat, have a seat. All right. Senator Maharaj.